Welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. Today we're going to be continuing our series on the A116 voltage controlled waveform processor right here. Uh, if you were with us in the last video, we kind of went through some of the basics of what this module actually does for you within a modular system and then talked about some of the concepts uh, that are needed to kind of go forward with this. So I may do a little bit of review as we're moving along, but I'm not going to go into as much detail as I did in the previous video. Uh, so if anything comes up in this video that you're kind of curious about, I would recommend jumping back one video to the basics video that I did about a week ago. Um, in this one, we're going to focus more on actual audio processing into this module since that's what it's actually intended for. And we're also going to incorporate our friend the oscilloscope over off to the side, as you can see. Um, there is a couple of things I wanted to explain. Uh, not the sequencer part, as you can see over here on the left. Uh, since I kind of went into detail on how that was patched up last time, I didn't want to occupy too much time in this video doing it. But I do have it set up uh, in such a way that it's going to be feeding both to the output down here at the bottom into our VCA, as well as out to our oscilloscope. And if you look into our sequencer section over here, uh, you have our sequencer here that's generating notes the sequencer controller, and then immediately next to it, you'll see these two green cables coming out right here. Okay, so this top one is actually patched into a malt, and this one's actually going off to my oscilloscope. And then this bottom one is going off to my oscilloscope as well. And the way this routing will work is I'll patch um, my VCO into the top one. So if you look at the oscilloscope, you'll be seeing the base waveform on the top uh, scope. And then in the bottom one, you'll be looking at the processed one. And over back at our uh, multiples here, uh, right here is where I'll be patching that in. So uh, if any questions pop up about that, uh, or you're curious about that, just jump through some of the previous videos on Raul's World of Sense. Uh, multiples is really just uh, creating copies of whatever signal I put in there. And the bottom section is gonna be one set of copies, and the top section is gonna be another set. So. Without that, with that, uh, let's go into the video. So we're starting out with this patch, and uh, I first would thought that it would be useful just to kind of hear a basic drone, so we kind of get an idea of what's happening over at the A116. So let's just take a sine wave, because everyone should know what a sine wave looks like. Kind of a nice little curve. Um, and we're just gonna patch it into our oscilloscope so we can see what the normal sine looks like. And there you can see it. Now you won't be able to hear it because I have it routed such that we won't be actually hearing the normal output. But now that I have that routed, if you look back at our multiples, this bottom copy right there is actually what's going over to our input at our what, A116. So I'm gonna take this output right here so we can see our processed output and then feed it over to our scope so I'm going to go back this way and then into the bottom section over here. There we go. So you, if you look at our scope over there, you should see two waveforms. Top one is our normal waveform or unprocessed. And then the second one is our processed. Now I do have some settings already kind of in here. So we'll kind of just go through these just to kind of see what uh, a basic um, enhancement or effect on this module will actually do for you. So uh, the one thing I will do is bring down symmetry, and I'll explain in a little while uh, why I did that. Um, so the top one should be fairly straightforward. The level, just like we discussed in the last video, actually is gonna amplify our signal up to two times. So if I bring that up, that's actually what you see at the oscilloscope. The processed version is going up, and you can actually nice get some nice hard clipping with it. Now you may not necessarily see that because it looks like it's actually going a little bit further than my my scope can read, but um, you can actually hear that a little bit. The, the sign is no longer smooth. It's getting a little bit of harmonics up at the top end. Depending on your, on your system, you may or may not hear all of that. Okay, so that's the basic control. So this one's just going to be our volume parameter, making our sign taller. Okay, moving along to the clipping level. 
Let's kind of move this up a little bit. Now you can see already that there's a little bit of change happening over at our oscilloscope. And it's coming from the bottom, so we're actually losing that lower curve on our sine wave as I bring up the clipping level. And this one, remember, is actually setting the clipping threshold from minus 10 to 10 to plus 10 volts. So as I bring this up, you can see our waveform looks like it's almost going to evaporate. And at a certain point, you will no longer hear it. If I bring it back, then you hear it again. Now let's kind of go through symmetry a little bit because as you noted right there, oh, nothing's actually happening. But depending on your settings down at symmetry, you may or may not get some useful results coming out. So let's keep the clipping level all the way up as I have it over here. And then we'll just bring up symmetry and you should see a little bit of change start to happen. Yeah, there you go. And so right there you can kind of see the change that's happening. Now one thing that I thought was pretty, uh, pretty cool when looking at this is if I bring it back to here where my clipping level is at about zero or at zero actually, uh, right there I basically have pretty close to what is coming in. So almost a one for one copy. Of course there's a very probably small amount of amplification happening because of this level up here. But now if I bring my symmetry up, you'll see something pretty interesting happening to the sine wave. It kind of flips over. Almost like a, an inverter. So let's see that again. So right there, our peaks and our valleys on our waveform are actually kind of matching up as we go across the waveform. And right there we have about, let's see, one one full cycle, about maybe another half of a cycle, so one and a half cycles right there. So as I bring up the symmetry, you can kind of see it starts to get smaller and smaller, but then once it hits zero, the output, our bottom waveform, the peak is actually matching where the valley is of our upper waveform. And the valley of the lower waveform is matching the peak of the top waveform. So almost kind of like an inversion thing happening here. Or maybe it is a true inversion. It doesn't mention the word inversion in the manual. And there may be a reason for that. It calls it symmetry. But I'm just going off observation. Couldn't find anything on the website that said this was a true inversion. But it does help create some pretty interesting sounds. So that's our symmetry control. Now if we take the sine wave out from here, um, and I put in a triangle wave, our results will be fairly similar. So adjusting symmetry, you know, our peaks and valleys match up there on our oscilloscope. If I bring it the other way, peaks and valleys are now in the opposite place. Okay? So that's just with a basic waveform. And again, the only reason we're doing this is so that we can kind of get a basic idea of what's going to be happening as we go through and then start kind of really getting into the nitty gritty settings of this module. Okay, so now let me jump over to my secrecy section and get some notes coming out from my A155. They're all coming out from down here in the bottom, uh, right there, I believe is where I have my CV. So now I'm going to just patch right here. There we go. And now you should be looking at that in our oscilloscope. I'm going to bring up my level so I can hear it a little bit better. Okay. And one other thing I'm going to do just for Sonic's sake is I'm going back to my, uh, my lower section here with my VCA and I'm going to bring back my, my uh, envelope generator. This is just to vary the sound. Now, if you're interested, um, this is actually happening, uh, let's see, post uh, oscilloscope. So you're not actually seeing this envelope affect the signal at the oscilloscope at the bottom. That's actually before it hits the VCA, in case you're wondering. But this is just something sonic for, for us 
as we're listening to it. Bring that up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of processing over here. 